welcome to the lectures on modern digital communication techniques. Uh, in the previous lecture, we have been looking at some examples of source coding and uh, we had taken a particular example where there could be three colors in one source represented by red, green and blue and uh, we had given their probabilities. So, I just cross check. So, yeah we had blue with a probability of half and green and red with probability of one fourth. So, with probability of half 1 by 4 and 1 by 4 and what we had seen is that if you would do fixed length coding. So, here uh, yeah if you would do uh, fixed length coding in that case uh, you are going to get 2 bits per symbol that is what we did and if you would do variable length coding uh, then you could get 1.5 bits per symbol and uh, the entropy of the source was 1.5 bits per symbol. So, we established that uh, if you would do variable length coding you can achieve uh, near entropy rates. So, what we are going to show you now is that you can also do a source coding with fixed length coding and improve upon the result that uh, you need 2 bits per source symbol. So, let us try and look into that. So, now uh, let us say we take uh, tuples where n is equal to 2. So, if n is equal to 2 then we have two symbols. So, each symbol or each place can be filled by three different options that is red, green or blue again red, green or blue. So, that means, this position could be filled in three different ways, this position could be filled in three different ways resulting in nine symbols. Right? So, if it uh, results in nine symbols, so that means, uh, we would require 4 bits right and uh, so so we are going to require 4 bits so we can move on in in this way and uh, and what we can what what we can summarize over here is that there are two symbols and two symbols require 4 bits right so that is two symbol tuple n equals to 2 requires 4 bits so, on an average you require 2 bits. So, that means, you are back to the situation of 2 bits per symbol right in, in this case. That means, you are not doing any good in this case. So, rather if we move ahead and uh, make let us say n equals to 3 as a tuple that means, 3 symbols. Again the first place can be filled in 3 different ways, the second place can be filled in 3 different ways, third place can be filled in 3 different ways. That means, I could get a red, red, red red, red, green, red, red, blue and then again a red, green, red, red, green, blue and so on and so forth I could keep on doing. So, that means, I could generate 27 symbols. If I would generate uh, 27 symbols, so that means, uh, in our terminology we have a source where m is equal to 20. 7. So, if we do this then the number of bits required to encode this would be a ceiling function of this that would result in 5 bits per symbol. right? So, now if you look at this we have 1, 2, 3 symbols requiring 5 bits. So, that means, we could write down 3 symbols require 5 bits. So, on an average 1 symbol will require 5 upon 3 and that is approximately equal to 1.67 bits per symbol. So, what we have established is that uh, if you can group in tuples even through fixed length coding instead of the previous mechanism by which you were achieving 2 bits per symbol by raw, raw encoding, uh, you can improve upon the situation and you can arrive at a number which is closer to the entropy that is what we had shown earlier and now it has been reduced to 1.67 bits per symbol. Now, these examples would also highlight or bring out to you the meaning of this fractional bits per source symbol. 
uh, it might be a bit confusing that what is the meaning of 1.67 bits per source symbol, but this is exactly what it means that uh, on an average. So, on an average one symbol requires 1.67 bits and when we did variable length coding uh, as is uh, clear here, uh, we can clearly see that you can achieve on an average. So, this is L bar. So, on an average you can achieve uh, so many bits per source uh, that is 1.5 bits per source symbol. So, there is no confusion about this 0.5 bits this is on average. So, some of the code words are of length 1, some of the code words are of length 2. So, which are again indicated here. Now, along with this probabilities with this code word length it lands up with this value. So, I hope this uh, clarifies some of the basic issues that we encounter in source coding. Now, moving ahead further, uh, we get back to our uh, calculations uh, where we had uh, said that you have a 2 gigabyte file to be transferred. So, we take that particular example and we take another combination instead of taking uh, 2 bits. Now, we say that let us take 4 bits. Now, if you uh, recall that previous example that we had, uh, we said that let there be a source which generates a black and white. So, this particular source and uh, then we did some calculations and we found that you can encode the source by taking 2 tuples uh, with 0.96 bits per source symbol. When we did this, we showed that you can actually get a saving of 0 0.5 gigabits for sending a 2 GB file and which would also account to almost nearly 1 minute of download time saved. So, now we, we get back to that same example and uh, remember in this case we had a black coming with a probability of 1 by 4 and white coming with a probability of 3 by 4. So, we get back to this example and this uh, calculations once again and now we say that what would happen if we take 4 such uh, source symbols and form a tuple. So, if you are going to do that in that case uh, you are going to have n is equal to 4 right and you can get a black or a white, a black or a white, a black or a white and a black or a white and uh, this black can come with probability of 1 by 4 and white can come with probability of uh, 3 by 4. So, if you are going to do this particular exercise you will find that you are going to get from 0, 0, 0, 0 indicates black and 1 indicates white. So, you can get black, black, black to let us say black, 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 white and so on and so forth. You are going to get all these uh, possibilities and uh, this is a probability of 1 by 4, this is a probability of 1 by 4 and so on and so forth. So, overall this symbol has a probability of 1 by 256 and this symbol has a probability of 81 upon 256 because this is a probability of 3 fourth, 3 fourth, 3 fourth and 3 fourth. So, if we uh, form this new symbol that means, there would be 16 possible uh, symbols in these and we would do some fixed length coding. So, what we would find is that L would be 8 for this case and down to 1.6 in this case and if we are to take the ceiling of L right, we are going to get numbers 8 and uh, there would be case when there is only one white this occurs with a probability of 3 by 264. There would be cases of 2 whites that would occur with this probability uh, 3 whites would occur with probability of 3 cube by 256 and 4 whites would occur with this probability. So, here the value of L is 6.4 of course, uh, this, this it is 4.8, this is 3.2 and so on and so forth. So, when you do the ceiling of it, this is going to be 7, 5, 4 and 2. So, now uh, these are the number of bits uh, that we are going to encounter. So, when we say 7, why did we do it? Because uh, there will be 4 such 7 bit sequences because there will be 4 such possibilities. White could be in all these 4 different places right and if you have uh, this one that means 2 whites it could occur in 6 possible ways 
right. So, there could be 4 such numbers, there could be 6 such numbers. Again, this could be in 4 such ways, this would be in 1 way, this would be in 1 way, right. So, this adds up to 10, 14, 15, 16. So, 16 numbers uh, finally, it adds up to. So, now, if you would calculate L bar, in this case, you are going to get L bar as 1 upon 256 and you are going to get 8 bits, right, plus you are going to take this next number. So, this will be 3 upon 256, that is the probability and uh, in this case, you are going to get 7 bits and there will be 4 such numbers, right. So, next we take this one. So, this is uh, 9 upon 256 is the probability, 5 bits is the length, 6 such numbers plus 27 by 256 multiplied by 4 bits multiplied by 4 possibilities plus 1 plus 81 upon 256. This is the probability of this and you are going to assign 2 bits to this and there will be only one such possibility. So, when you add this up, you end up with a number of 0 0.9335. If you do this and you try to calculate the amount of savings that you are going to get, uh, what you are going to get is approximately for the same case of 2 gigabyte file, you will be approximately getting 1 gigabit of saving, which is roughly indication of 2 minutes of download time if you are 2 minutes saving in download time if you are using a 10 Mbps link going by the same method of calculation as we did here as we did in this particular case. Uh, how would you get this? This answer would be 1 minus 0 0.9335 multiplied by 2 gigabytes. So, that is converted to bits and so much of bits. So, if you are communicating at 10 Mbps, approximately 2 minutes of time uh, would be saved, right. If you are using 4 bit tuples and uh, this, this is a huge, huge saving. If you look at the amount of bits that get saved, right. Although this uh, number is not so interesting, but if you would recall, you have come one step closer to this number. I will have to this number, which was the entropy of the source with these probabilities 0.811. So, you cannot beat this, you can at most get down to this entropy. In the previous case, uh, when we did 2 tuples, you had got down to 0.96 bits. Now, when you are using 4 tuples, you have got down to point using 4 tuples, you are getting down to 0.9335. So, slowly as you are increasing the number of tuples, you are decreasing it. So, again it establishes the fact that if we make larger and larger tuples, you can even with fixed length coding, you can come closer and closer to the entropy. But of course, what we have seen if we use variable length coding, it becomes uh, much, much easier. So, with this uh, we come to an end of uh, discussion of source coding using fixed length and variable length coding by the techniques that we have discussed uh, till now. So, now uh, what we see is uh, this particular method uh, requires you to calculate the code word length, it would require you to compute the, the binary tree and uh, then you follow up and form these uh, code words, map these code words to these, uh, to these particular uh, symbols and then you encode. Now, uh, could there be any other method which is quite efficient as these? So, at that point, uh, there were a lot of investigations and uh, one of the outcome that was uh, very, very useful uh, that happened is the Hoffman encoding. Or the Hoffman algorithm which is used to find code words uh, almost automatically uh, given a particular source. So, 
in uh, this particular part we are going to discuss about uh, how to use this particular algorithm in trying to achieve a similar result as we had done before. So, if we consider a source let us consider a source uh, where the probabilities or the pj's are mentioned and the for different symbols right so symbol number 1 we're going to index is a symbol number 1 symbol number 2 or basically j you can say so we're not going to write a1 a2 a3 because uh, this is sufficient we simply say that let there be five symbols so we are taking the case where capital m is equal to 5 and uh, as in the other cases you are given the probabilities so this is let's say 0 0.4 this is let's say 0 0.2 this is let's say 0 0.15 this is 0 0.15 and this is 0 0.1 so now you're given these probabilities and you have to form codes as is the typical problem. So, what we have seen we have done in the previous cases is uh, if we have to do a fixed length coding the simple step that we did is here we counted m is equal to 5 and this would lead to calculate log base 2 of m and what we would get is number of bits would be 3 right that means we require 2 to the power of 3 possible symbols so 2 to the power of 3 is greater than 5 so it's not a problem so that means 3 bits so each symbol would be encoded using 3 bits right and uh, if you would do a variable length coding you would do a uh, log base 2 of 1 upon these numbers these probabilities you'll find the code word lengths then you would construct the binary tree and once you've constructed the binary tree you would assign the leaf nodes to these uh, particular symbols and uh, then you get your code. So, you have already found the length and you would match the length with the symbols and your job is done what uh, those examples we have taken already. So, now instead in Huffman algorithm things are done in a little bit different way. So, what they do is uh, you would start off by looking at these probabilities and these symbols it is it is an algorithm it is a it is a mechanism which you can uh, write a code and you can easily implement this. So, it starts off by taking the symbols with the lowest probability. So, in this case we have these symbols. Then it what it does is it forms a reduced set of symbols that means instead of taking 5 it forms a reduced set where it combines 4 and 5 and if it combines 4 and 5 then this combination would occur with a probability of 0.25 right. So, I will group these two and I would say I have a symbol 1, 2, 3 and a combination of 4, 5. So, 1 occurs with a probability of 0.4, 2 occurs with 0.2, 3 occurs with 0.15 and 4 and 5 together occur with a probability of 0.25. Now, this process would continue So the next step in the in the second step let us say or step 2 what is done is you look at these set of probabilities again. So, you have 0 0.4, 0 0.2, you have 0 0.15, 0 0.15 and 0 0.1 and you have already combined these two to 0 0.25. At this point you look at the next two probabilities next two smallest probabilities. So, whatever you have done in this particular step uh, you would repeat that that you would find those two symbols with the lowest probability and you would group them. So, here what we find is that 0 0.25, 0 0.15, 0 0.2 and 0 0.4 these are the new probability sets right. So, from this set again if we apply the same methodology we are going to get this as the lowest set of probabilities right. So, this was again symbol 1, symbol 2, symbol 3, symbol 4, 
symbol 5. Now, we again apply the same uh, protocol or the same method as we had applied before. So, what we get? We shift it a little bit 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Right. And we have combined these two in the earlier steps. Right. So, now again we apply the same philosophy. What we find is that we have 0 0.4, 0 0.35, 0 0.25. These are the three combined symbols that are left with us. So, again we take the lowest probabilities and we combine them and we form a new symbol and that occurs with a probability of 0 0.6. Finally, in the last step in this particular situation, what we get is 0 0.4, 0 0.2, right. So, we had combined this to 0.25, we had combined this to 0.35, we had combined this to 0 0.6. Now, we are left with 0.4 and 0.6. So, definitely you combine them and you end up with a probability of 1. So, that also means that now all your symbols have been covered and you encapsulate everything into a single symbol. So far, so good. So, what do you do with this? So, now you start labeling the branches. You could label the branches uh, in any order in any particular fashion. So, I since this is a bit cumbersome, I will write it afresh here. This is for symbol 1, for symbol 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, every upward going branch you could label this as 1, every downward going branch you could label this as 0, you could do it vice versa. You could do it this way. So, now if we start reading from this point and go to this probability or to the symbol, this string, this binary string that we encounter would be the code for this. So, that would mean that we can assign the code 1 for the symbol occurring with probability 0 0.4. If we traverse this branch, we are going to get 0, 1, 1. So, here we can give 0, 1, 1 to this probability or to this symbol. We would follow 0, 1, 0 means 0, 1, 0 to this probability for this particular symbol and then we can give 0, 0, 1 to this or we can give 0, 0, 0 to this particular one. Right. So, ending end, end of the day what we end, end up with is we have the symbol 1 getting a code of 1, the symbol 2 getting a code of 0, 1, 1 and symbol 3 getting a code of 0, 1, 0, symbol 4 getting the code 0, 0, 1, symbol 5 getting the code 0, 0, 1. Now, if we analyze this code, what we find is, so let me draw a margin trying to separate these areas. 
and once we have this what we find is that one which had a probability of 0.4 that means the highest probability it is it is getting the lowest code word length. So, the symbol which is having the highest probability getting the lowest symbol length uh, code length is as per our earlier description as well. Two gets a has a probability of 0 0.2, 3 has a probability of 0 0.15 which is close to that, this is a probability 0 0.15, this is a probability of 1. So, what we can see is that all of these have code word length of 3 and uh, that is quite ok and this is which is the highest occurring symbol has the lowest occurring uh, symbol code word length. The second important thing to observe is that 1 is not a prefix of any other code word. We do not find 1, we do not find it here, we do not find it here, we do not find it here, we do not find it here. Right? Now, if you take uh, any other uh, code word, let us say 0, 1, 1. Now, first and foremost before we try to compare, we see 1, 2, 3, 4. These are 4 different code words each having a length of 3. Now, since each have length of 3, there could be possibilities of them to be the same, but what we find over here, uh, sorry I, I think I have made a mistake at this point, yeah, it should be 0, 0, 0, I made a copying mistake, this is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, yeah. So, since all of them are unique and these are 3 length, that definitely means that none of them are prefix of any other. So, what we end up with this is a prefix free uh, code word and what you can verify that whether these particular combinations that we end up with results in the lowest possible code word length if you do by any other mechanism. So, this particular mechanism uh, gives us a, a direct way of uh, getting into the codes, getting into the code word for a particular set of symbols whose uh, probability descriptions are known. So, at this point uh, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that uh, these uh, techniques that have been explained to you uh, can be used in source coding or source compression. Uh, there are many other algorithms uh, other than Hoffman algorithm for example, the Lempert-Ziv algorithm uh, which you can also uh, find out in many texts. Uh, similar techniques are used, I mean not exactly the same, there are variations, but running with the same philosophy. If you are compressing a file using let us say a zip or a dot r or any other mechanism, similar uh, philosophy would be used. But try to uh, think over for a minute and see that given any random source, means I pick up a source at a random, of course the source is going to generate random sequences, but I am picking up a particular file which I do not know a priori. Now, if I take two different sources, let us say I pick up uh, one text from a particular subject and another text from a novel, uh, it is highly likely that the probability distribution of the symbols are going to be different. So, the question that comes up is what particular probability distributions do we assume a priori? So, this is an open question for you and uh, this particular thing is uh, used in preparing, uh, in coming up with better and better algorithms. Uh, extending this particular idea, if we look at uh, images, uh, there is this is JPEG compression and others, they also use a similar philosophy, but the method and things are uh, in details are quite different. Uh, the overall objective has been brought out through the particular example, where we tried to uh, transfer a 2 gigabyte file, through which we showed to you the amount of savings that you can obtain, not only in the number of bits that you send, but also in the download time that you save and which can also be extended to the amount of energy that can be saved by these uh, philosophies. So, we would, uh, we have almost covered our discussion on uh, encoding of discrete sources and uh, we will not take up discrete sources any further from this point. Uh, in the next few lectures, we will be taking up uh, conversion of analog sources to digital form or discrete form and uh, this particular section of the course that we have covered uh, would definitely get attached to the output of the section of the analog to digital converter that we will see in the upcoming lectures.
थैंक यू